Cronon is like a DVR for your Java applications. It records every single thing that happens inside your Java application and saves it to a recording file. You can then take that recording file to any machine and play back the recording in our special time traveling debugger Eclipse plugin. You just need the recording file to play back your recordings. Now you can record uh, use from within Eclipse using this blue button here or if you have a remote cluster you can use our recording server product to do the recording. So here I've made a recording and yet yeah, let's use a time traveling debugger plugin to play back the recording. So here it seems like a normal debugger and as you can see I can step forward and I can step in and I can see the local variables and the stack traces. I know that the program is not running, I'm just running this off that single recording file. So I can step forward but I can also step backward and you can see the values change over here as I step back. Um, but if you see on the left hand side there's this green margin and it shows me the execution path of a method. This is different from code coverage in that it shows me just the execution path of this single call. So I can see instantly that this if block was not taken by this call but this else block was. And instead of stepping one by one I can just click directly on the green line to jump directly to that point in time and see the entire state change. In the case of this loop here I can just click on the variable i and see all the values that were ever assigned to i. I can then click on any value and jump to the point in time when that value was assigned. From that point on I can step forward or backward and in this way I can look at every single iteration of the loop independently without having to step through the entire loop uh, one by one. Uh, I, let's say I want to examine this binary search method. Since there are no breakpoints in Cronon, I can just put my cursor here and say run to method forward in time and it will take me to the next call to this method instantly. The method history view shows me all the calls that were made to this method and I can click on any call and it shows me the return value and the arguments and the threads over here and clicking on a call takes me directly to the point in time when that call was made. So you can see the execution path changing as I click on all these calls. I can also filter this so let's say I want to see only the calls which hit line 48 and where the value of the local variable mid was um, greater than 4 and it shows me the filtered view and all these uh, calls hit line 48 and you can see if I click on mid here uh, the value of mid became greater than 4. Um, so you can see this call over here has uh, two, two, this line has two calls over here and uh, it's tough to see what the return value or the argument to each call is. But the current line view shows me exactly that. I can see the argument and the return value and I can click on any call and step directly into that call. I can also see all the exceptions that were thrown in my program and I can click on any exception and jump directly to the point in time when that exception was thrown and I can see the entire state of my application over here. Uh, all the threads that were running and everything else that was happening in all those threads and I can step forward and I can step back also to see exactly what it was that caused this exception to be thrown. Note that this exception could have been thrown five hours uh, into the program and when we jump to it, Cronon will jump to it instantly without any delay. We also have this really cool feature called post execution logging and what it allows you to do is allows you to get rid of all the logging related clutter in your program. What you can do with post execution logging is add logging to your code after it has executed. So let's say uh, I have this method here and I'll add a logging statement which says uh, connected to and I can access variables over here too so this dot server address and I add this logging statement and I play this and I can see okay it connected to this address. Uh, note that my code is not being cluttered with the logging statements. Uh, let's add uh, a few more. Let's add one which says uh, one over here. Um, it says uh, connected and uh, let's add one for disconnected. 
Okay, disconnected. Uh, okay, I added these, and I can see. Okay, connected this to this server. Then uh, the that connected method was called, and then we got disconnected. Uh, let's add one more, which says shows me what happened. All the messages were passed uh, while uh, the connection was on. So I'll add one more. In message. Okay, now when I play this. I sh shows me okay, it got connected and these were all the messages passed and then it got disconnected. Uh, so I see the log instantly. There's no waiting time. This could have the program could have run for two hours, but you would see the results instantly, just as if the log statement was actually there in your program. And not only that, if you click on any log statement, it takes me to the point in time when that statement was output, and I can see the entire state and uh, what, what all the threads are doing and I can step back and see exactly what happened in my program when that log statement was there.